I'm going to clean out the clutch, get that thing all working nice, and reface all the plates. That's this video. The way to get the clutch out of this thing, you got to take the rear end out. It's got a, so I took the gas tank out, because the gas tank is actually kind of in the way of the rear end. Actually, I got that over here. Gas tank is final rinse. gas gauge is a cork. There's full, there's empty. It's real simple. That's the gas gauge for this car. Yeah, we'll be taking the rear end and moving it back. Torque tube. Get the transmission out. There it is right there. There's the brake rod. Look at that. Left and right. Mechanical brakes rear only. I got the car blocked up with some redneck jack stands, pieces of wood. The rear end is suspended in the air. And you can see that the rear end is good because it's not making any grinding noises or any braking noises. That might be a little bit of a brake drag of some sort. I'm going to clean out the rear end. I'm just going to fill it with kerosene and swirl it around like this a few times. Then I take the transmission out to get to the clutch. Rear end is out and pulled back. There's the springs that it attaches to cantilever. There's the redneck jack stand, cardboard box that the that the uh, torque tube is resting on. Transmission is dropped it on the floor. You'll see the transmission when I get it out and I'll do something. There's the clutch. The engine right there, the bell housing for the clutch. Let me get a flashlight on the deal. Full of mouse nests. Rusted together. The thing is held onto the flywheel by three giant bolts. One right there. One over there. And one right there those are the bolts that hold the clutch to the to the car multi-disc clutch there's a big spring inside of there holding that plate together so i don't i don't want to mess with that i'm gonna try and get this thing out in one piece there's a the transmission Everything attaches to the transmission housing. Because the car is made of wood, you can't attach all these things to the actual body of the car. There's a parking brake. This attaches to a rod that goes back to the, the, the wheels. There's two actual rods going back to, to the brakes. One goes for the parking brakes and one goes for the regular brakes. They both attach to the rear drums, but one goes on the inside of the drums and one on the outside. Brake pedal, clutch pedal. Brake pedal on the right, just like normal. That attaches to the other brake rod. That attaches to one brake rod, which splits up and goes into both wheels. The parking brake attaches to the other brake rod. Clutch pedal. You see there's a throwout bearing. There's the transmission uh, spline that goes into the clutch. I'll show you the clutch later. You can see they got grease caps on there so that every time the transmission comes out you can grease it, which I think you could actually grease that from you can actually there's there's a door here. Yeah. That door there is to open up so you can grease the two fittings to the clutch throwout me mechanism. That's pretty cool. But you know you're not gonna grease that thing if you gotta take the transmission out. You gotta take the whole rear axle out to get to the transmission. Here's a clutch pedal. Pull in on that. Hold on. I gotta brace that. The pull in on the clutch pedal. Did I throw out that throw out bearing already? Yeah, see that? It throws out. The flywheel is actually hollow. This over here is the ring gear. 
the uh, starter motor attaches to the ring gear on there. The hot this hollow flywheel has three big bolts sticking out. Three studs coming out, very strong. This is a clutch from a 1918 Buick. This is the front that faces the engine. The three studs that you saw fit in through here, but attach here. This is the back of the clutch. Let me zoom in on it. Transmission spine fits in there. This whole entire thing spins with the flywheel, except this hub. This is the only part that spins with the transmission. There's a spine for the transmission. It fits in between all the driven plates that make this thing drive. When the whole thing is loose, Five driven discs and four drive discs as well as this and this which this these squeeze it together because there's a spring and the spring fits between this plate and this plate that squeezes it together there this plate this plate and this plate are being held apart by the spring which squeezes the plates and engages the clutch However, this plate and this plate are firmly attached to each other by these bars that go across and the nuts that hold the bar on. So this plate and this plate act together as one unit. So when the spring is in here, it pushes all that pressure against this plate to engage the clutch. But when you press down on the clutch pedal, you not only press down on this plate here, but because this plate is attached so firmly to this plate, that actually pushes this plate forward. So even though, even though when you press down on the clutch, pet, pl clutch pedal, you press, you make the spring even tighter, it doesn't matter because what really happens is this plate here, because don't forget, this, this plate here is firmly attached to the flywheel. This whole plate here is the one that's attached to the flywheel. So when you press down on this, this stays attached, this goes forward, which pushes this forward. And when this goes forward, the, it gets loose. It's kind of hard to see that this is loose, but I, mean, I bet that makes a lot of noise when you press your foot down on the clutch. I can't imagine that not being really noisy. All right, let me show you. Let me take this apart here. Show you what this is made of. Sometimes this gets a little sticky here. I spent a week getting this thing all cleaned out of all the mouse turds, mouse nests, acorns. Unbelievable amount of stuff and rust in here. It took me a week to clean this all up. There's, a, there's clutch facing here, another drive driven disc. This is a drive disc. The drive disc has facing on both sides. The driven disc is just a piece of metal that goes with the transmission. And then another drive disc, another driven disc, still a little rusty. I did everything I could to get the rust off. It's a little pitted, but hey, that's what it's going to be. Another drive disc, another driven disc, another drive disc, another driven disc. And all the way at the bottom, the last one, there's actually a piece of facing on that. So you got four drive discs times two, because there's two times four of these, that's eight surfaces, plus that surface, plus that surface, there's ten friction pads. Ten friction pads. I picked these up at Kmart. I was going to go to Friction Pads R Us, but it was much cheaper. Walmart had them too. Everybody's got them. Cumberland Farms had them, but they were they were they only had five of them. 
these are the rivets to hold them together. Um, it's gonna be a heck of a job. I gotta cut out the old rivets, even though they're not really worn down at all. Actually, these old ones are thicker than the new ones. No, they're the same. They're like brand new. I wonder if I should reuse the old ones. Who knows? I had to soak these in dish detergent, scrub them like crazy. And these I soaked in vinegar and several times each to get them clean. This is just to show you where the spring goes. Spring, there's a big, but you still got to press down with about 280 pounds of force. That's one fat guy or two normal sized guys pressing down with their foot to get that to go all the way down. Enough to get these nuts on. Can you imagine that? This, this spring does not like to. It's a very stiff spring. The way to get this thing apart, the way I got it out of the car was it was so rusted together into one big chunk of rusty mess that I had to take all the nuts off and well, the nuts that were out here. I took all the nuts off one at a time and I just one I tried to pry it with a crowbar. I got this whole thing to shoot out about 20 feet behind with the spring with it. Once that shot out, I had to take this whole thing apart one at a time while it was still on the flywheel. I couldn't get this out of the, out of the car. I had to take it out one, one plate at a time, pry, pry them off one at a time because they were so rusty together. It was a big mess. The question is now, how am I going to get this back together again? I decided I'm not going to reface the, the pads. I'm just going to use the old ones. Use them until it, it might last for years. I don't know. How am I going to get this together when I told you it takes 300 pounds of pressure to push that spring back in? Well, I got a three-quarter inch bolt going through the hub. Eight inches long. I got everything lined up just right. I got everything lined up so that those, you know, those bolts, the bolts that come out of the flywheel, they have to be exactly right, otherwise you'll never get it on. Because once I get this thing all tightened together, I can't change any, anything about this. So, what these are, this is 5 8 inch wooden dowel. Cut off some, and I put them in there so that they're all lined up. And this one here, there's three of them. I got it lined up so that it's just right. So once I get this thing tightened down, I'll keep I make, keep making sure those are all lined up. So when I get this all tightened up down, those those I'll be able to put the studs in onto the flywheel. All right. This here is exactly the right size. I don't really know where I got it from. I think I got it from a barbell set or something. But let's try and get this. It's it's about an inch too short, so I gotta. Press it down to get this thing started. So all I gotta do now, tighten that nut down, keeping everything lined up just right all the while. And also making sure I no matter what happens, this has to, I want to keep this, probably keep it in. I had, I had three of these little dowels so that it doesn't move. All right. I'll talk to you once I get that nut down. And just like magic, it's tightened all the way down. This is extremely dangerous. If that thing should spring out of there, it would probably be the last thing I ever see. Put the safety to stop the spring washers on. Tighten these nuts down all the way and take that nut off. And I will be done. 